In this video we're going to take a look at news uh, within SharePoint. So we'll be looking at how we can generate news articles. So there's two ways of doing that. So we can either pull in external content to make an article or we can actually create our own news article. We'll also be looking at how we can manage news uh, within SharePoint. So how we can roll news up and how we can display it on our home page. And we'll also take a look at how we can promote news articles so important topics don't get missed. So we have two ways that we can produce a news article within SharePoint. So anywhere where we've got this add button here, we can select the drop down and we can either add a news post or a news link. So to start off with, I'm going to choose a news link. This will open up a, a pane on the right hand side of my screen here. And this is where I'll put my news link in. So I'm going to put in a link for the UK's Department of Education. And here you get a preview image and we have a title box and a description of what is in the article. Now something to be aware of is that if you are using a link into a magazine for example, that link may pull in some advertising or content that you don't want in your article. This is all fully editable so you can tailor it to your own requirements. When you're happy with your image, your title and your description, all you do is select post. And our news link has now appeared in our news area here and all the user has to do is click on it to access the content. The second way to create a news article is to, again, we we'll select add, but this time we're going to choose news post. Now this opens up a fresh page and here we've got three options so we can build from a completely blank template so starting from scratch we can add our own columns and text and images videos and more and go for a visual or a basic text I'm going to select visual and then create page now the handy thing about this is that Microsoft helps you construct the page and add your own rich content so let's begin by adding the name or title of our article but also on the left hand side we have this selection panel here where we can edit the web part so basically everything within the news post is set up as sections so each area can be edited in its own right so with that in mind we can then change this so at the moment we can have a, a colour block we can set things to overlap we can change the image and the title so we've now lost the, the color block here and uh, we can put our title in there so as you can see we can change everything on this side we can import images so if we wanted to gear this more towards a, a, a departmental news uh, item we can put pictures in relating to science or art for example we can also move this page around so we can actually set a focal point and if we don't like what we see we can always just reset it and go back or undo to change things as we go along and basically we can work our way down the article again editing the section we can go in here change the layout put some colouring into the background and we can manipulate it to suit our requirements once we're happy with our content we can then click post news and that will then bring that through to our SharePoint page where it will be displayed along with other news items that have been created. So that was a look at how we can create and display news within a page. However, other areas of my organisation or school could also be generating news articles as well and we may wish to bring those forward so we can display them on our school's homepage for example. So we're going to have a look at how we can bring in some news and how we can organise news articles and roll up the news. So on display is our most recent news article that's been submitted and we can now adjust our news window by selecting edit and then by coming over to news clicking on this we can then edit our web part here. So that now opens up a window on the right hand side so starting at the top we can look at where our news is being sourced from so we have a choice so if I was to go purely for this site these are articles that have been generated within the school's homepage 
However, by clicking Select Sites here, I may wish to also pull in news articles that have been created, for example, by the English department. So by clicking on those, I can also pull in from another English site. And as we can see, as we're clicking the boxes, the news window here is being populated. I can select Home. I can select Demo. What it does do is that by selecting these sites, it will pull through the most recent news articles here. So by deselecting these, as we can see, the tiles change. So I'm just going to keep it for the English department. Next along we have the uh, recommended for current user button. So what that does is display news articles that are recommended for the current user based on their sign-in credentials into SharePoint. So for example, they can see news from all the sites that they have access to. However, they wouldn't be able to see uh, news that was being fed from uh, staff sites, for example. I'm going to keep it to selected sites just to keep the content varied. Coming down the page, I can also open up more departments within my school. It also gives me a recent site so it shows me where I've been working. But coming down here, I can also then look at the layout. So uh, at the moment, I can have it set as a top story, a list view, and we can even do a carousel version where here I can then adjust the number of how many posts I want to show where I can set it into a cycle mode like this and then where I can choose how many seconds between each change of news post which ranges anywhere from 2 seconds up to 10 seconds so I'm going to move it back from carousel back to tiles so then coming down the news list I can set some filters here to include certain keywords I've also got an audience targeting button where I can promote news to various users across the site. However, let's take a look at the organized section of the news list. And what we can do in here is we can actually pull news forward. And to do that, we can select the plus sign here, select news to organize. And that opens up a window here. So these are all the news posts that I've got available to me. So what we may find is that a new site that has been created has had some new content added to it, which doesn't necessarily always mean that it gets pushed back to the front again. So you may have to reorder the news. So let's take a look at this warp drive article and First of all, I'm going to get it into my list, and I do that by dragging and dropping. So I'm going to put it into position number three, because that's the next one available to me. And then I can then slide that up the list into the number one slot. I can make my geography newsletter number two in this case, and the chocolate article will drop down into number three. I close that, and as you can see now, where the chocolate article was at the front, a warp drive article has now been pushed forward into the main tile and the geography newsletter second and the chocolate article third. As we can see, warp drive one, geography two and the chocolate article three. I can move it up and down here in this list now, now that it's been added. I can move that forward look and I can put the chocolate back into the number one slot and the warp drive back into number three. So you do get a bit of control as to where within the tiles your news can be displayed. Let's take a look at how we can distribute news. So if I have a departmental or a subject SharePoint site and I have news being added to that and I want to push it out to a wider audience, I can do that by generating a news digest. So from anywhere in SharePoint where there's news, so first up we select the See All heading there. We can then click on Email and News Digest button. And from here we just have all our news articles that have been created within, in this case, our English department. And I can select the articles that I wish to add to the digest. So I'll do three in this case. Click Next down in the bottom right hand corner. We can then give it a name such as and once we've given it a title we then can send it out. So uh, we can send it out to uh, individuals or group email boxes by typing in the address 
I have a, a range of English classes to send it to so I'm going to select uh, English Year 11 and we can put an optional message in here but once we're all happy we can click send and that will now appear in the recipient's email inbox so now that our news digest has been sent we can go to our student view which is Susan and we can see in Susan's inbox here this is the news digest that's been posted through so then all Susan needs to do to access it is click on the title here and that will take her through to the news article where she can then read it in full a second way to uh, share news is to promote a particular article. So in this case, the uh, geography department in my school has created a newsletter. And I'm going to click on it and open it. And on the tool ribbon at the top here, we have this promote button. This opens up a panel on the right hand side here. And it gives us some options. So we can either add the page to our navigation, email, Yammer if you use it within your establishment, or we can save it as a template. I'm going to email it because I want to push it out to uh, other departments. Again, I'm going to send it through to my English department. I can also type in individuals. I can also put in an additional message. And when I'm ready to send it, just click the button. And again, let's go and take a look at our students' inbox and Here's the promoted news that has come through and again all the recipient needs to do is just click on the title and that will take them straight through in this case to our geography newsletter so as we've seen by creating news whether it be via a news post or just adding a link we can add rich colorful content to our SharePoint site and we then have the capability to be able to share our news content with our team and colleagues.